English language learners uh, face a variety of challenges in getting a, uh, an equitable education. Uh, often English language learners, especially um, in, uh, in urban areas, tend to be uh, clustered in, uh, in isolated schools, often, uh, often without benefit of native English speaking models uh, around them. Uh, often they're in high poverty schools uh, with concentrations of many things that you expect of, of uh, issues that, that cluster around uh, heavily concentrated low-income schools. Uh, teachers with uh, relatively who are unprepared uh, to address their language needs. Um, so I think that's one. Uh, the other is uh, the, uh, the lack of sensitivity, I guess, and appropriateness of all of the supports that go into uh, effective instruction for the students. Um, and so it's not just around teacher uh, preparation and professional development, uh, but also around uh, materials, uh, language uh, uh, that's accessible to the students, uh, engagement of parents appropriately in their education, so in the assessment and accountability, the kinds of tests that, are, that, that they're, they're given, which is often uh, not uh, sensitive to or might be heavily laden by language uh, rather than um, uh, being, uh, uh, rather than assessing the, co the, the content of the, uh, of the subject matter that's being addressed. Part of the, the reason why people uh, have started paying greater attention to English language learners is their increasing numbers. Uh, nationally, more than, than uh, five and a half million students are considered English language learners. And then there are a the, large number of students in addition who have learned English but who have been English language learners. Um, the, uh, in addition to increasing numbers, uh, it's a, it's a national issue because while in the past English learners were concentrated in a relatively small number of states, now uh, because of, of uh, labor markets and, and other sort of uh, issues, um, English learners are found in a lot of states such as southern states, Georgia, South Carolina, Iowa, Kansas, where they uh, have not traditionally uh, been in schools. And so I think that's, that's another reason to pay attention to it as a, as a national issue. The Common Core Standards is an effort led by the states, uh, especially the Council of Chief State School Officers and the um, National Governors Association uh, on behalf of states to develop um, a common set of standards in English language arts, literacy, and math. Uh, and the goal is to, um, uh, to align uh, the standards in the content areas across states. I think that the spirit of, of, of the, the reform is really not for the Common Core Standards to be seen as a list that you start at point one and go all the way through, but rather that systems become uh, strategic about what aspects of it they want to choose and emphasize uh, and, and become the focus of reform. Because you're not going to get there overnight. Uh, instruction, rich instruction, language rich instruction is going to take, take a lot. A systemic example of what good alignment might look like would be, um, you would certainly start with the standards uh, and look at, for example, the aspects of argumentation or some aspect of language such as explanation uh, that both cuts across uh, content areas uh, but also is sensitive to the uniqueness of the content areas, such as in math or in social studies or in English language arts. Uh, but then it wouldn't stop there. Uh, what you would do is you would also want to um, align uh, the ways in which teachers are trained to use assessments, especially not just information from end of year assessments, but also formative assessment and the kind of practices that are used for uh, understanding where students are coming from in order to take them to the next step. And so by systemic, I really mean um, not just standards and assessments, but also supports for teachers, uh, even uh, the kinds of supports that administrators can provide uh, for, for good teaching for English language learners. Uh, I, I think the most important uh, uh, understanding that, that policymakers need to 
have about English language learners uh, is that uh, while the challenge of the Common Core is in setting a high bar uh, and, and trying to be in some ways realistic if we are to, to really have college career readiness goals, uh, that the, the bar is being set extremely high and therefore that the challenges for English language learners is especially going to be challenging because they have traditionally been, um, have been challenged by meeting, meeting standards. Uh, both for reasons of language as well as the poverty that often accompanies the, uh, 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 their status as English language learners. Uh, in addition, I think it, it's really important to, to, to recognize that the Common Core uh, really has a lot more uh, expectations around language, around the use of language to, uh, to explain, to, uh, to argue, um, to uh, display knowledge in very complex ways. And so, uh, the be, you know, being able to solve a mathematical problem is very, uh, uh, is, is challenging enough. If, if in addition to the mathematical uh, challenges, you need to, to verbally explain how you arrived at an answer, that's going to really uh, up the ante as far as what, what, what students need to do. So I think that's, that's really important. Um, I think policymakers also need to know that English language learning takes time. Uh, it, it, it isn't accomplished in one or two years. It's frequently, uh, it takes between four to seven years for students, even under the, the best of circumstances, to develop English language proficiency, especially to, to meet the kinds of challenges in the Common Core. So, um, so I think policymakers need to be realistic in their assumptions. Uh, that also means that uh, educators also need to understand this as well, because often educators are are not fully aware uh, of the amount of time it takes students to learn English. Uh, I think, uh, in terms of bringing policymakers and researchers together, I think that uh, trying to bridge the divide between language on the one hand and academic content on the other. A policy tends to push those two pieces apart, uh, trying to treat them separately. Uh, and in fact, I think what needs to happen is for, uh, uh, you certainly need to address language and content uh, in a coordinated way uh, rather than separately. Uh, you don't need to mush them together necessarily, but cert certainly in a coordinated way. Um, and, uh, and I think that also realizing uh, the overlaps between English language learners and all other students. That is, the language challenges exist for all students. Uh, even the, 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 the most gifted students in some areas uh, can have real difficulty with uh, articulating, explaining, uh, rationalizing their understanding of content. And so uh, uh, finding the common ground that is uh, created by looking at this through the language lens, I think, is is, is an opportunity. Uh, I think it's uh, um, policymakers especially are, are pulled more by political forces which tend to divide rather than unite. And this is an opportunity to, to bring, help people find common ground.